When are you going to realize that the American visa system is a money-making machine? Okay, picture this. On the first desk at the embassy of the United States, where you apply for visa, you have to pay $3,000 before you do anything, before they interview you, before you do any business. Hello, welcome to my channel once again. Um, this video that I'm showing you, it, it funnies me. And not long ago, my previous video, you saw the video that I posted and seeing this video confirms whatever I was saying previously in the other video. Listen, Africans, we should stop this. We should stop this. For a very long time, I've heard this before. And to be honest, I have never experienced this before, but a lot of people have experienced it and they've said it a couple of times. But I think, Charlie, we should put a stop. Why will you gather money? $3,000. This is even just your visa. Your visa fee, $3,000. Plane ticket is not part. And your pocket money and everything. You gather this money. You go to American Embassy that you want visa. First desk, they take the money. You move to the second desk. They bounce you and your money is not refunded. Bro, like, what are we doing? Can't you invest this money? Listen, this $3,000, hmm? you can invest this $3,000 if it is in Ghana. That is 36,000 Ghana cities. There are lots of businesses that you can invest this money in. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Like, why? So there is this Namibian woman who went to the American embassy in Namibia that she wants American visa. She went there, she moved to the first desk, she paid the money, and the second desk, just immediately, first desk, second desk, they bounced her on the second desk. Flag inside, yeah. the American flag. Guys, we are Africa and America, yes, an embassy. An embassy is here to help people. If you want to go for a holiday to America, if you want to study, if you are an African, you can never be white. We can never be white. We can only be African applying to either study, holiday, whatever in America. But if you already see on your system that a person doesn't qualify for the visa, then why take them to the counter where they pay 3600 for the visa and go to the next counter and be denied a visa then first and first interview them if they don't qualify don't make a person like this they don't even ask anything they just say you are denied you you should pay, even ask questions. No pay three thousand six hundred just to be denied to the next counter this is the second time guys we we this these are supposed to be our friends in America. They built they big a build a big building in yeah, our country. It's true. They built a big a building in our country so that because we are friends, they are friends with Namibia. At least that's what we think. But if a young lady is like it's here. And my question is, are they not the same people that always tell us that we are poor, we don't have money? Is this not an extortion? I want to understand something. Is this not extortion? When are you going to realize that the American visa system is a money-making machine? Okay, picture this. On the first desk at the embassy of the United States, where you apply for visa, you have to pay $3,000 before you do anything, before they interview you, before you do any business. On the second desk, that's where they have to approve whether you are eligible to enter the U.S. or not. And if you are not eligible and they reject your application, guess what? No refund. And they know that you are a $1 a day people. And yet they take away your $3,000. The American visa system is designed to take money from you. It's a money-making machine. How many millions are they making across Africa? In all these countries, Kenya, Malawi, Uganda, South Africa, Namibia, Nigeria, how many non-refundable $3,000 payments are they making every year? What's wrong with us Africans? America of today is not the America of the 80s. The land of opportunities. The land of the free. It's not. Why would you want to go to America in the 21st century? Go to China with $3,000. You come back with machinery. You'll be manufacturing something in your house. And making money for you and your family.
Okay, you're telling me that you're going to the United States for education? The United States is not on the top 20 best schools in the world. It's not. It's not even on the best 40 in the world. So why are you going to the United States for? I mean, look, man. Wherever you want to go, the UK, the what, you're not welcome. They don't want you there. Go to China. You want to send your kids to school? Send them to China. They're going to learn how to create AI, technology. China is the best place to go these days. You know the good thing about going to China? You're not going to stay there. You cannot stay there because you're going to see a lot of opportunities back home once you land in China. Because the things you're going to see are going to open your eyes. And you're going to say, I can do this back home and make money. I can do that back home and make money. Once you land at the airport and start walking around China, it opens your eyes on things that you can do back home in Africa. You're not going to stay. By the way, all the other races apart from Africans that go to the US and UK, over 80% of them go back to India. They go back to China. They go back to Pakistan. They go back to Indonesia. They go back to... But Africans, over 60% choose to stay. Why? Pure brain drain. You've gotten your PhD and everything and you stay there. I mean, you want to be a teacher in the United States with a PhD when you know what you can do with a PhD down here. Brain drain. China was made by the people who went into the diaspora and came back with knowledge and machinery. People were buying old defunct factories in Britain dismantling them and shipping them back to China and making good out of them. Why can't we do the same as Africans? Africa, wake up. Go to China. Stop going to the United States. It does not matter anymore. Go to China. Have a good day. If this is not extortion, then what is it? I want to know. I want to understand. You are in our country and you are extorting us. People that you say we are poor. $3,000. Listen, why are Africans like... Why? You are telling us that we are poor. And look at the money you are taking from us. So just imagine the number of people that have been going there. And this thing is not peculiar to just Namibia. Almost every African country, it happens there. Because I've heard stories. Why? Why? Why do we do this to, this to ourselves? Why? Ah. This much money, you just went there and you just gave it to them freely like that. And you are afraid to even question them that, please, you did not give me the visa, so my money. You are afraid. Because our African pulpit leaders... They are also not doing anything. They know this. They know that this thing is going on, but they are not going to do anything about it. Imagine we are giving these people the same dose, like of whatever they have been doing to us. We are giving them the same dose of what they have, have been doing to us. For instance, an embassy, an African embassy in America, for instance, an American goes there that they want visa. We take their money for the visa. And the next decks we bounce them. We don't refund. We do it one, two, I'm telling you, it will spark conversation and they will start complaining. And we will bring out our evidences to what they have been doing to us. I think that like this should be the way. But you know, we have the we have these puppet leaders that cannot do anything. We they cannot do anything to help us. We that we always vote them into power. They cannot do anything for us. This simple thing, this simple decision, they are afraid. Why do we allow ourselves to, to, be, to, be, to be swayed left, right, center all the time like that, Africans? Why? Just look at the woman gathering this amount of money to go and get a visa. And you bounce there. Is this not extortion? No, like someone to, like should tell me, is this not extortion? Not listen, we should talk about this. We should just talk 
so that these things will, will stop. Why? In our own countries, in our own continent, we should do better. African leaders, they should do better. They should do better. Like the time I saw this video, I was just sad. I was like, why? And we Africans too, we should learn how to invest in Africa. This money plus your plenty kits, and I'm sure this these monies can can do a lot for you. If you want to set up businesses in, in like in Africa, you can do a lot. But why? We will gather all this money, and when we even go there, they treat us. Why? Listen, we deserve whatever they are doing to us. I'm telling you, we deserve whatever they are doing to us. We deserve it because we went there. And I'm saying this, we deserve whatever they are doing to us. I thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe.